from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. Updates on COVID-19 and the General Assembly, and we've got details about the Henrico School Board meeting with the Board of Supervisors last night, all coming up on today's Henrico News Minute. It's Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. It's brought to you today by Henrico County. And now for the news. Last night, the Henrico Board of Supervisors met for a little more than 90 minutes with the Henrico School Board. The two boards discussed several topics, including the future of the Achievable Dream Academy at Highland Springs Elementary School, which will be expanding in the fall to serve rising sixth graders who have graduated from the elementary school. The boards also discussed setting up a committee to plan for the grand reopening of Holiday Elementary School and the opening of the new Tucker and Highland Springs High Schools, all happening this fall. They also discussed the need for some capacity relief in some far west end schools, notably Rivers Edge, which will remain over capacity in the fall even despite a redistricting effort that was approved by the school board last month. Officials haven't yet decided whether it would be best to build a new school in the region or expand several existing schools. Supervisor Tommy Brannon of the Three Chop District, where Rivers Edge is located, suggested that county officials take stock of land that the county already owns to determine if building a new school on one of those sites would work before looking at purchasing a new site. Board members also discussed the possible November 2022 bond referendum that could fund a number of school projects, among other countywide projects. They also expressed support for county plans to continue looking at ways to consolidate efforts between general government and school services, especially in departments doing relatively the same type of work. But County Manager John Vitokas was quick to point out that that does not mean anyone in those departments on either side should fear for their jobs. In fact, he said it's that type of consolidation that allows the county to propose like the one he put forth to the Board of Supervisors earlier this month that would impact virtually all county employees. Said Vitolkas, quote, efficiencies do not mean your job goes away, end quote. During the discussion about the Achievable Dream Academy, Verina District Supervisor Tyrone Nelson expressed some frustration about the fact that a site for the proposed sixth grade expansion of the program has not yet been publicly identified. Never in my 10 years have I had to wait for a school board member to give me personal updates on anything. So we've always been open. Like there's no secret process. So we are in the month of March almost, and we're talking about a sixth grade school. We've known about this for several years, and I am now at a joint school board meeting having to ask, can you please tell me what locations you are considering? The Achievable Dream Academy had come under fire during a November school board meeting at which board members learned that students at the school were reading on grade level only between 3% and 19% of the time. At that meeting, Verina District School Board member Alicia Atkins and others wondered aloud whether the program was worth continuing at all. During yesterday's meeting, Atkins told Nelson that that was a key reason why a site for the middle school program had not yet been made public. I think what's significant in this conversation is understanding, um, first and foremost, making sure that the partnership was going to continue. And so having a discussion around making sure that the partnership is going to continue and what improvements are necessary really comes before discussion of location. And I think that's a really key point that both entities understand what improvements need to be made on both sides and then validate that those improvements can indeed be made. Superintendent Amy Cashwell later said that two possible sites would be the existing Highland Springs High School, which will be vacated, of course, when the new version opens in the fall, or the Central Gardens facility that the school system owns. One unique challenge, however, is that there will only be 60 or 70 students in the program in sixth grade, and Cashwell said it could be awkward to have them in a building by themselves for a year. Another 13 COVID-19-related deaths were reported in Henrico County yesterday, most or all of them the result of analysis of death certificates, 
that have just been processed by the Virginia Department of Health but related to deaths that occurred after the holidays in most cases. Still in the past four days, that's 44 new COVID-related deaths that we've become aware of in the county according to the VDH. Henrico's total of 403 is second only to Fairfax County's 870. Henrico is the seventh largest locality in Virginia. Fairfax is the largest. Henrico also yesterday reported 90 new cases of the virus, keeping it below 100 per day for nearly the entire past week. The seven-day moving rate reached below that number at 81 new daily cases on average. The county's seven-day positivity percentage among PCR testing encounters is down to 8.2 percent. The rapid testing encounter rate is 7.2 percent, both as of February 19th. Altogether now, 65,000 or so residents of the county have received at least one dose of COVID vaccine and more than 18,100 are now fully inoculated. Statewide officials are inoculating about 30,000 people each day, but those numbers sank last week when 106,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine did not arrive on time because of the weather. The General Assembly has passed two bills that would repeal the ban that keeps some health insurance plans sold in Virginia from covering abortions. Both loosen restrictions through the state's health insurance exchange. It currently provides health care coverage to about 270,000 Virginians who are self-employed or don't have access to insurance through their employer. The legislation would allow insurers to provide the services but would not require them to do so. The current restriction on abortion coverage through the state's health insurance exchange was put into place in 2011 during Bob McDonald's administration. The Virginia DMV is now offering some more online service options for customers during the pandemic. You can now visit dmvnow.com to replace your commercial driver's license, driver's license learner's permit, driver privilege card or learner's permit, or your limited duration driver's license permit or CDL. Online credential replacements are only available to customers 18 and older. These are all transactions that previously required an in-person visit. In total now, there are more than 50 transactions that you can complete online. Others include vehicle registration renewal, driver license renewal, and requests for vehicle and driver transcripts. A traffic alert if you're in the West End starting in just a few hours at 10 a.m. The railroad crossing on South Gaskins Road will be closed. Should be closed most of the day for repairs. Crews for CSX expect to complete their work and reopen it by sometime tonight. Today's Henrico News Minute is brought to you by Henrico County. It's February and all month long Henrico County is celebrating Black History Month. Watch original biographies and documentaries from Henrico County by visiting tinyurl.com backslash Henrico Black History.